Dr. Thomas Seafried, professor of biology at Boston College, has a radical yet deeply researched belief that up to 99% of cancer cells can die on their own if you simply block their main growth mechanism. According to him, all cancers, no matter the organ or tissue, share one devastating weakness, their dependence on fermentation. Under a microscope, cancer cells may appear distorted, genetically damaged, and chaotic. Yet beneath all their variations, there's a single, unifying truth. They survive through fermentation energy, energy without oxygen. That's what makes them different from healthy cells, and that's what makes them vulnerable. Whether it's colon, breast, brain, or lung cancer, the underlying metabolic flaw is the same. Cancer cells cannot live without fermentation. To keep this fermentation process going, they need fuel, glucose, and glutamine. These two compounds are the lifeblood of every cancer cell, powering their relentless growth and replication. Cut off these fuels, and the disease collapses from within. All cancers are saying the same thing, Dr. Seyfried explains. We are fermenting. You want to kill us? Take away our fermentable fuels. But for decades, the medical world has focused on genetics, assuming mutations drive cancer. Seyfried argues the opposite. Mutations are not the cause. They're the consequence of this metabolic dysfunction. To truly stop cancer, you must stop its energy supply. You must take away glucose and glutamine. Because cancer cells cannot burn fatty acids or ketones like normal cells do. They are metabolically trapped in a fermentation cycle. And this is where strategy matters. Cutting glucose is relatively simple. Even a basic low-carb or ketogenic diet can significantly reduce cancer AS fuel. But glutamine is more complex. Your body needs glutamine. It supports the immune system, protects the gut lining, and maintains liver and brain function. Yet under conditions of inflammation, insulin spikes, and mitochondrial stress, glutamine turns rogue, becoming fuel for cancer itself. Glutamine provides the nitrogen cancer cells need to build DNA, RNA, and proteins, while glucose supplies the carbon. Together, they form a deadly alliance, feeding tumors with powerful synergistic energy. You can lower glucose through diet and fasting, but glutamine requires targeted intervention. You can't eliminate it, you must manage it. That's where natural compounds come in. One of the most potent is psilobenin, found in milk thistle, a plant long known for liver protection. Modern studies reveal it does much more. Psilobenin interferes with cancer metabolism, blocking the enzymes and signaling pathways cancer cells use to consume glutamine. In simple terms, it puts cancer cells on a forced diet. Two other natural compounds show similar promise. Naringenin, found in citrus fruits, especially in the white peel and membranes of grapefruit, oranges, and lemons. Genistein, found in soy. Like silabinin, they restrict cancer quieter C-S ability to process glutamine and may even prevent its formation in the first place. The goal isn't to destroy glutamine, it's to restore metabolic balance. If your aim is prevention, focus on stabilizing insulin, reducing chronic stress, and adding milk thistle, citrus bioflavonoids, and soy-based foods into your diet gradually. If you're in treatment, always coordinate with your doctor. These compounds can complement therapy, but timing and dosage are critical. As Seyfried emphasizes, you can suppress glucose, but you can't choke off glutamine completely. It's essential for the gut, immune system, and urea cycle. You must be strategic. That means pulsing, using timing, dosage, and cycles to weaken cancer cells without harming your body. Ultimately, the solution circles back to the root cause, inflammation. When inflammation is under control, 
glutamine behaves normally again. That's why omega-3 fatty acids, found in fish, walnuts, and flax seeds, are vital. They calm the storm, lower cytokines, and prevent the metabolic chaos that turns glutamine into a cancer fuel. Finally, movement matters. Physical activity strengthens your mitochondria, the cell S powerhouses, ensuring your metabolism runs efficiently and keeping glutamine in check. The message is clear. Cancer is not a hundred diseases. It's one disease with a hundred faces. And the path to defeating it begins not in the lab, but in the metabolic environment of our own bodies. Whether it's swimming, running, walking, or lifting weights, movement matters, no matter your age. A 90-year-old may not run a marathon, but he can walk every day. A younger person might lift weights or train harder. The principle remains the same. The more you move, the healthier your mitochondria become. Every time you breathe deeper, every time your muscles work, your cells pull glucose and glutamine out of circulation, depriving cancer cells of their lifeline. Pair that with strategic metabolic targeting, and those malignant cells are hammered from all sides. They can't handle it, Dr. Seyfried says. People say cancer cells are versatile. They're not. We've studied them. They are absolutely dependent on fermentation fuel. He argues that traditional treatments often make things worse. Radiation and toxic chemotherapy may kill some tumor cells, but they also flood the body with the very fuels, glucose, and glutamine that cancer cells crave to rebuild. It's like trying to starve a fire while pouring gasoline on it. That's why patients often experience exhaustion, nausea, and severe side effects, yet the cancer persists. The treatment stresses not only the tumor, but also the body itself. Dr. Seafried's metabolic approach doesn't promise miracles. It's not a magic bullet. It's a logical chain of cause and effect, a system that removes the conditions cancer needs to survive. Each step, from stabilizing blood sugar to reducing inflammation, strengthening mitochondria, and starving the tumor's fuel supply, works together like gears in a machine. When the entire chain is in sync, cancer loses its advantage. Though metabolic therapy hasn't yet been formally adopted into mainstream medical guidelines, Dr. Thomas Seafried remains confident. He believes that in the coming years, as research advances, targeting cancer metabolism will stand alongside, or even replace, traditional treatments as one of the most effective strategies to prevent and fight cancer.